bowl full of worms is this girl's ration. She gobbled it up. Afterwards she volunteered to tie herself to a chair and wait for the soldiers to come in with a smile and a good morning greeting. When she was tied up again, she reminded the soldiers to check the ropes for problems. She has a strong sense of self-management. The girl is then taken into a classroom where dozens of other children are also tied up. The teachers teach the children according to a schedule but never come into close contact with them because although they are children, they are stimulated by the slightest smell of human beings and their bloodthirsty instincts are triggered because they are a bunch of zombies. The children, the children are infected but have an independent consciousness and are able to speak and communicate and have feelings. The point of their confinement is to obtain valuable experimental data to find the most suitable candidates to develop a vaccine that will save all of humanity. So every once in a while, a position is vacated. Jenny, who teaches, sees the children as real human beings as she spends time with them. She was particularly fond of Melanie, who was always obedient and obedient, so she tried to reach out and touch the children, but was stopped by the soldiers who were watching. The next day Melanie was taken away by the soldiers as usual, but instead of going to class she left the base. She felt the outside world for the first time, but the scene before her was hardly a pretty sight. Outside the walls, layers of zombies are trying to break through the last line of defense. Melanie didn't know she was the same creature as them. The soldiers then led her into the lab. Upon entering she saw a brain wrapped in mycelium. The research professor who had been in charge of the project was staring at her, because after comparing the data, he was convinced that Melanie was the right person for the job. The human race is finally saved. She lost consciousness after the injection of a second dose of anesthesia. The professor said he was sorry and put Melanie on the operating table to start the dissection. Jenny suddenly came in and grabbed the fire extinguisher to stop the operation because it seemed to her that this was a child being dissected. They present as children. The professor sprays Jenny's eyes and then has the soldiers take her into custody, claiming to understand Jenny's feelings. But the fate of humanity is at stake and this is the last chance. The operation continues. When the alarm goes off, the assistant goes to close the window but is a step too late and a zombie rushes in and bites her. The professor rushes to save her by grabbing a piece of broken glass. But her hand is badly injured at this point. At this point, the assistant was infected and mutated into a zombie. She rushed to her room and hid. Melanie was not attacked because she shared her scent. She got a scalpel and cut the ties and escaped not realizing that the base had become a living hell. Soldiers were fighting with the zombies. Melanie soon found Jenny and, seeing her wounded by the soldiers, Melanie's wild spirit exploded with excitement. She jumped on the two soldiers and bit them to death. Afterwards, Jenny picks Melanie up and picks her up in a rescue vehicle, with the professor in it, and they drive away from the base. But it's not easy to survive in a zombie-ridden world. The girl's mouth is covered in blood and she is tied to the roof of the car with a mask on her face. She looks curiously into the temple. The first time Melanie has seen the outside world, she is a zombie and the hope for research into a vaccine. The group is worried that Melanie will reveal her zombie nature, so they let her sit on the roof of the car. The rescue van is their refuge from the zombie attacks that can happen on the road at any time. But the car broke down during the battle and everyone had to walk to the base. They made their way through the forest to a town that had all fallen into a zombie stronghold. The group is hungry and they will not make it to their destination without food. So they take their chances. The loss of their senses relied heavily on smell. And with a special gel to suppress the smell they could remain somewhat undetected. They carefully make their way through the group of zombies. All of whom stand still as if in silence. Then a mother appeared with a baby chair in front of them. The professor couldn't believe that a zombie could be maternal and when she went to check it out. She alerted the group and in the heat of the moment, the leader shot and killed the zombie. The noise wakes up more and more walkers. So they take refuge in a building and settle down for a while. Melanie is tied up and left in the care of the professor. She asked the professor what kind of creature she was and where she had come from. The professor didn't refuse. She replied that the soldiers had found them in a maternity hospital before they were full term. The mother's organs had been eaten by the child to become an empty shell. And after birth they seemed to be partially immune. So different from the usual zombies, they have the ability to feel and interact, and behave more like a human being. The medical doctors speculate that this is due to the children not being directly infected, which is exactly what the professor needs for his research. Because the lost virus is a fungus, 
It can encircle and control the functioning of the brain. Melanie learns the truth. I just want T.O. be a hungry. The next day, the group is ready to go out to look for food when they see the zombies have gathered in the area. If they don't lure them away, everyone will starve to death. And that's when Melanie stepped forward, knowing that only she, as a zombie, could do the job. The girl saw a cat and she actually tore into it. After eating her fill she found a dog. She picked it up and walked to the group of walkers. Everyone was attracted by the smell. The girl then puts the dog down and the walkers all turn their attention to chase after her. The team is finally saved and can get out of the building. However, Melanie was re-muzzled and her hands tied behind her back for safety reasons. After a short walk, the group noticed that the road was littered with strange plants. Several of the zombies converged and grew strange fruits out of their five senses. The professor said that this was what the virus would look like when it matured, and that the plants were getting bushier as we moved towards the center. The largest plant had wrapped around the whole building. It had the ultimate ability to reproduce. The professor picks up a spore capsule and tells everyone that if all these bloom, the highly contagious virus will spread through the air to all corners of the world and it will be the end of the world. The professor's wounds had deteriorated and caused sepsis, and she knew she was dying, so she tried to make a vaccine out of Melanie in her last hours. The group found a mobile laboratory on the side of the road, well equipped enough for her to complete the operation. In order to prevent everyone from getting attached to the baby and ruining the experiment, the professor prepares a drug device to knock everyone out and then starts preparing for the operation, but then Melanie appeared behind her and didn't pass out because she had been symbiotically linked to the virus for a long time. She was able to go for a long time without breathing. The professor knew she couldn't beat Melanie, so she persuaded her to give up her life to save her favorite teacher, Jenny, and give her a new and brighter future. The virus spores out there may be hard-skinned, but all it takes is a flood or a fire to crack open and cause the end of humanity. And the vaccine has become the only way to save it. Melanie was ready to sacrifice her life after hearing this. But then she suddenly asked the professor a question. Am We're alive? Being? The so, professor answered in the affirmative. Why, Why should it, it be us who die for you? Melanie walked out and then she set fire to the Buns virus building. The fire soon spread and countless virus spores floated in the air, thus declaring the complete destruction of humanity. The leader came out to find her. He couldn't understand why Melanie was doing this. She said that the world was still here, but with a new set of ties, because the human race was no longer fit to live. The leader told Melanie to shoot herself because he didn't want to become a zombie and live. The only person who survived was Jenny, who will always live in a contamination-free lab and will always be Melanie's best teacher. We have always claimed that humans are the masters of the world, but a virus can make us surrender, so there must be a fear of the world.